Hi, this is JP from Nautilus or Arkham. Welcome to this uh, the Dream Eaters campaign playthrough deck overview video. So I decided to do a deck overview video on the decks I am going to use in this campaign run. So I will be playing the Dream Eaters as an 8 uh, scenario campaign. So combining the A and B sides and on the A side, on the Dreaming side, we are playing uh, parallel skits. So uh, let's start with the skits deck and on the uh, waking side, on the B side, we are playing with parallel Roland. So uh, I decided to try out the parallel investigators in campaign mode. I have only played the, the challenge scenarios with them. So really looking forward to seeing how they function in, in campaign play. So First off, we'll start by going through the Parallel Skits deck for the Dreaming side. So, um, you can see that I have the hypo, Hyperphysical Shotcaster in game. So, this wasn't intended uh, at first, but then I drew the weakness offer you can use. So, I got two experience to use immediately. So, uh, that is why I added Hyperphysical Shotcaster into the deck. I had um, 25 automatics uh, or whatever that um, rogue weapon is that gives you plus two fight uh, if you are fighting uh, an evaded enemy. But I, instead I decided to take the same costed Hyperphysical Shotcaster that just immediately fights with your agility and also I could take two experience on it to uh, make it uh, use any skill for fighting and dealing plus one damage, so that, that's good. And I think I will upgrade the empowered configuration later on to get plus two skill value for the test and maybe make it um, evading and investigating uh, weapon also. But uh, continuing with the deck, uh, we want to investigate efficiently. So lockpicks uh, are in the deck. There are also two copies of Thieves Kit for investigating and getting resources. Skits is all about getting resources, so that helps getting more resources at the, uh, during the game. So we can, uh, <laughs> first of all, have resources to uh, pay the offer you cannot refuse if it comes up. So, so that's one thing. And of course we have money talks and uh, uh, then uh, well connected in the deck, so these are uh, ro rogue resource decks, so we want to have a lot of resources. Uh, of course, Lone Wolf, as we are playing through solo, uh, Lone Wolf is an auto-include, basically because it gives you a resource if you start your turn uh, without other investigators at your location, so that's every turn with uh, true solo. Uh, Leo de <coughs> Luca is in the deck at first. I think I will upgrade this to uh, either Lola or Delilah, uh, three costed rogue allies that give you agility and either fight or intellect. And you can hover clues with resources or fight, uh, deal damage with resources. So, uh, Lucky Secret Case is for additional card draw, but I probably will upgrade this to an. Uh, high XP rogue accessory slot uh, item later on. Uh, then we have events. We have hit me, uh, we have 21 or bust. So uh, card playing um, a theme going on. Faustian bargain, of course, uh, really good for true solo. Uh, lucky, level one. Uh, of course, parallel skits has the ability to uh, upgrade um, Fortune and Gambit cards and keep the unupgraded versions in the deck so I could have four luckies or even six luckies in the deck and these uh, uh, that you leave in the deck won't uh, take up any deck slots. So that is also why Parallel Skits begins the game uh, uh, with a slightly uh, smaller deck of 25 cards. And then um, 
only one skill card unexpected turrets in the deck. Uh, we'll see how this functions. So quite a lean deck and um, hopefully it has enough investigation power and uh, uh, ability to um, fight or evade enemies. But we'll see. So next we'll go to uh, Roland quickly. Okay, and here is Roland. I will start from the directives. So uh, on uh, parallel Roland, you have to at decoration uh, pick three directives. So I picked uh, the due diligence. So uh, you cannot fight more than twice each round, and during a skill test while investigating, evading, or parrying, exhaust. But the, this directive, you get plus two skill value for the test. It's uh, for each enemy engaged with you. Uh, then we have the red tape, and uh, you cannot play more than two cards each round. And when you play an inside or tactics event, exhaust uh, this directive uh, that in event co uh, gains passed. So that's useful. And lastly, we have leave no doubt. Uh, you cannot have more than uh, you cannot move more than twice each round. But uh, this is the most important. You get plus three sanity for Roland. Uh, so uh, nine and eight. That's really good soak. Uh, speaking of soak, uh, we decided to grab the Hunter's Armor and Peril Roland starts with 5 experience at the creation. So I took the Enchanted uh, already on this, so it gains Relic and also takes up an Arcane slot. And that's because we also have Bandolier. So Bandolier is here because we are using as our main weapon Runic Axe, which takes 2 hand slots. So Bandolier is needed for that, because uh, we want to have a flashlight uh, in hand or Roland's 38 at some point. Uh, we have Tetsuo Mori and uh, prepared for the worst for helping us find uh, their Runic Axe from our deck. Uh, then uh, uh, crack the case for economy, drawn to the flame for uh, getting two clues as one action without a test. Scene of the crime, getting a uh, free clues, and uh, we can play this as fast action with the, one of the directives, so that's great. And a shortcut for movement, uh, which will help with the uh, limit uh, to movement uh, hindrance from the directive. And then we have God's Perception, Steadfast, Take the Initiative, and Vicious Blow, so a lot of skills. And our weakness is Paranoia, so we might get start on resources at some point but we'll see so <clears throat> uh, quickly looking at the uh, what I took on the runic axe with the 4 XP I had is inscription of fury uh, so if we this attack is a successful add addition to this standard of damage deal one damage to each and other enemy engaged with you so this is really powerful against those swarming enemies in the three meter cycle ancient power so we can imbue the same inscription up to three times so that that is really good if we need to boost our damage or to hit power so this is crucial i will probably <coughs> have uh, have some uh, points to upgrade something else but uh, roland can only take up to the guardian cards level three so we can't upgrade this that much anymore but we'll see how that functions so those were both of the decks so um, next up, I will be playing this uh, campaign starting from the green side. So A first, uh, 1A, then 1B, then 2B, then 2A, uh, 3A, 3B, 4B, and then lastly 4A. So switching between the uh, scenarios or, or the dreaming and waiting side in between, but playing, trying to play the same side uh, two games in a row just to make it yeah, easier for my uh, at my end but uh, yeah I look forward to the gameplay videos those will be coming up shortly on my channel so hope you guys like this uh, deck overview video thanks for watching and until next time